I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! And how you guys doing? Welcome to the show. It's Happy Hump Day, baby. You guys out there looking for some hump pump, I bet. Welcome to the show. It's Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. And man, I had a very good question from uh, a subscriber. He asked me what bugs me the most when I do Biker News. And I have to say... The sentencing that these judges hand down for people convicted of killing a biker on a motorcycle. I actually got a story that we're going to be covering because I went through and looked for one. It always seems like they get light sentences. And it's always where the coverage of the story is the motorcyclist's fault. The first thing that the media has to mention, well, they were wearing no helmet. Okay, you know what? Recently, I changed over to a helmet. It's not because I know it's going to help in a real hardcore crash or wreck, whatever you want to call it. I know most of the time going over 25 30 miles an hour it's really not going to help that much uh, other than you have a pretty face when you're in a casket it's them you know you're going slower and stuff where you know like i seen this summer guy was making a left hand turn lost it cracked the skull on there couldn't have been going more than 25 miles an hour that's where a helmet could have helped but that's the first thing the media is always going to bring up, even if, even if, it's not the motorcyclist's fault. They always want to put us down, and I think that has to be the worst thing that I see in the news when it comes to this lifestyle. It's bad enough when you have people drinking and driving and they smash into somebody that New Hampshire 7 case it's only public defenders working on his behalf but they're working so damn hard to get their name in the paper it's disgusting when did you ever know a public defender to help any damn buddy it's only when their names in the papers that they do. But that guy had a proven track record of doing drugs, been drinking, and he killed seven people. The guy up north claimed a cop on a bike was a racist because he was riding a Harley. Killed him. When's it actually stop? When are these people going to get the book thrown at them? What a lot of these newspaper people don't understand is bikers are not made up of just tattooed guys out there causing a ruckus. We got people from all walks of life in this scene. We got fathers, we got mothers, brother, sisters, cousins, whatever you be that are professionals or hard-working blue-collar guys and women. They have families. They have kids to come home to. How do you think it makes their families feel when the only thing that they want to put in there is a couple sentences and then they weren't wearing a helmet? That is god-awful reporting, especially when they actually don't cover the story. Take, for example, the New Hampshire 7. There's only a few uh, reporters covering that one. That thing up north, the one down in Texas. 
They try to make it out to be the biker's fault. I can't stand it. I already know how media acts. I would see it every damn day. It don't make it freaking right. Tell the whole story of how that motorcyclist died. Was it a car making a left-hand turn right in front of them? Were they drunk? Were they high on drugs? Actually do a story instead of a few lines. And you'll see what I mean when I cover this one story. Again, these people are mothers, fathers, and all that stuff. You know... I mentioned bikers have to be the most bravest people in the world because they jump on them motorcycles and they're going 70 miles an hour with three inches of freaking ground speeding by them. Any wrong move can put you down. You bikers don't need the aggravation of how the media has been treating them. Ever since Sturges, which they said was going to be a Petri dish of COVID-19, only turned out one death that we've heard, uh, I guess they stopped covering that story because they didn't get what they wanted. And they're ones that are behind the major push that white bikers are the racists. I've never seen it so bad in the media, and I'm talking going quarter of a century back, than they are today against bikers. Clubs always were used to it, but now you're bringing in independent, regular Joe Smoes and making them look out to be the bad guy. These are the same people going out into their communities and helping out. Helping out local governments, state governments, because they don't have the money to do it. So what happens? Poker runs put on, special events are put on, and who are they put on by bikers? So you can see why that is one of the biggest, biggest pet peeves that I have. For one, somebody lost their lives. Two, their family has to see that dumbass article you just did a write-up on saying, well, they didn't wear a helmet. Well, if you had any intelligence whatsoever, you'd know the statistics for helmets and if they save or if they don't. But, of course, you're too ignorant to go do the research on that and put it into the paper. This media has become so bad in this country, it's nothing but a propaganda machine. A propaganda machine for all the elite liberals out there, as I say. Bikers are good people. Bikers are the backbone of this country. Veterans first, our fire departments, and our other services, and then there's bikers. Bikers ain't racist like you're claiming. Bikers don't go out there and hurt people on purpose. They're just damn fine people. And to say otherwise is a bunch of freaking shit. A bunch of crap, man. I don't know where you got your journalism license from. Who writes these stories? Oh, wait. You don't need a journalism license. Well, what school you went to? Because now I guess you got to go to school to be considered a real reporter when this country was founded on by, you know, an independent reporter. But anyway, you just put out one side of the story. It's always slanted. And you wonder why people doesn't like the media. Nobody trusts you. Quite frankly, your opinions don't mean dick to me. I don't care about your politics. 
left or right, whatever the hell they might be, you don't go after fine people who love this country more than anything in the world. I actually did a video that talked about there's nothing more American than a biker. Personally, I think it's time for the biker to get out there and fight all this BS going on in this country. There is no reason why one of our own should, who lost their lives, should have an article like that written. There is no reason why we do not fight back against this crap that like happened at Sturges and all these other freaking rallies where they were blaming bikers for the spread. It's funny when your numbers don't uh, add up, you, uh, you let go of that story, don't you? Because you only want a narrative. You're out for clicks. And I think it's time for bikers to step up and fight back. I know when I see something, I'm emailing them, I'm trying to get a hold of the reporter. Nine times out of ten, they're too chicken shit to return a call. Crap, what am I saying? 10 out of 10, uh, most of the time, they won't even uh, send an email back if you're critical of their work. But it's very important not to give up. It's very important, and this is just not biker stuff, it's very important to support independent creators, be it YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever the hell it is. Because that's where you're getting your actual feelings out of this country. They're reporting it as they see it. Me? I love Tim Pool, man. I really do. He's straight up. He's not biased. He tells it like it is. He was around the world reporting on some bad stuff. That's what reporters used to be. It ain't like that anymore. So, I hope I was able to answer that question. That just, that bugs the hell out of me. When you see somebody go down, lose their life, and that's the way they treat it. And it's even worse when you have people that were drinking or intoxicated on some stuff. Get these light-ass sentences, man. How is that justice? Somebody lost their father, son, grandson, whatever it is. How is that justice to give them maybe four or five years? They killed somebody. It wasn't an accident when they were sitting there freaking drinking that shot. It wasn't an accident if they were needling it up smoking it up that's not an accident so what do you guys think man uh, let me know in the uh, comment section uh, don't forget man the two dollar super chat really appreciate that uh, you can uh, do a recurring uh, two dollar donation every month on uh, paypal yes I'm working on getting cash app I'm new to all this kind of technology, man. <laughs> new to it big time. You know, I've been getting told, hey, why don't you get a Discord server? And I'm like, I don't freaking know. I gotta look what up it is. But, you know, the technology is up there. Also, uh, go subscribe on our BitChute uh, channel because a lot of the stuff goes up on there. So, let's get into the news, man, and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about with everything. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. We're going to go overseas right now. A lot of stuff happening over there. Perth now. Attempted murder man allegedly shot by senior bikies are is accused of conspiring by Blake Andrew Bust. 
two senior figures in the Banditos Outlaw Motorcycle Gang will stand trial for an alleged attempt to murder an associate last year. Kenneth James Whitaker, 45, and Sean Brian Irwin, 29, will face trial for allegedly attempting to murder Ashley Richard White in July last year. Whitaker and Irwin, who are senior figures in the North Brisbane Banditos branch, faced a committal hearing in Brisbane Magistrates uh, Court on Thursday. Whitaker was also uh, committed on a charge of dangerous conduct with a weapon. Police allege the pair attempted to murder White, 37, in July last year, allegedly over an unpaid drug debt. During the hearing, Mr. White gave evidence that he saw a firearm when he attended a remote area in Samsonville. He said he overheard a conversation that he and another member were conspiring against Whitaker and tried to butt in on the conversation before he was shot. Mr. White said he thought it was because another member had gone around a man known as Kenny to source drugs. Quote, I'd been bashed two days before that, and we were going up there to talk about that, he said. And then you're seeing the pictures of the guns and all that. When he was shot, the bullet grazed uh, White's chin before striking him in the shoulder. Man, that was a lucky deal. Whitaker's uh, banister, Kim Bryson, questioned White on his police statement, asking why he had left out details of a second car attending the scene. Quote, there's a lot to remember. It was a pretty intense night. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Whitaker and Irwin's defense lawyers argued that there was no prima fa fascia case for attempted murder based on the reliability and credibility of two witnesses. Quote, there is no evidence on which the Crown could point to to establish their proposition that the defendant had formed an intention and it was to kill the complainant. Irwin's defense lawyer, Doug Wilson, said there was nothing a jury could rely upon to find any intention to kill Mr. White. But Magistrate Anthony Gett rejected the no-case submission, saying a jury could reasonably form the view there could have been an intention in the pair's actions to kill. The pair was committed to Brisbane Supreme Court for a trial at a later date. Irwin made an application for bail following the committal, but it was refused, saying the nature of the charge was serious and there was a risk of interfering with witnesses. Whitaker is also facing charges including possession of dangerous drugs, got the damn hiccups, unlawful possession of weapons, assault occasionally, body harm, and robbery. The two were arrested at separate properties in Sampsonvale in, uh, in December of last year. Uh, several handguns sawed off. All that stuff was uh, seized. Uh, if you go over to the YouTube channel, you'll see all the nice little guns. Man, you got some of them tore up. <laughs> anyway, let's go over to, again, Yahoo News. Bikey boss Tony Mitchell has been granted bail after allegedly punching another man, another man, at a Melbourne cafe. The president of the Mongols Melbourne chapter is charged with assaulting the man at Gilson South Yara on October 4th. It's alleged Mitchell punched the man three times to the ground, leaving him with a possible facial fracture. Well, maybe there's a shuffle or something. He said something about his mother and he got mad. I don't know. 45-year-old Bikey was granted bail in the Melbourne Magistrates Court on Tuesday on charges of a fray intentionally causing injury and assault. Man, you guys got some weird charges over there. I think it would probably be mob action over here. I don't know. Mitchell's lawyer Damian Shells accused police of grandstanding no, not one of them. Over the most inner minor incident in the world. The bikey boss didn't even strike the man enough for him to lose the drink he was holding. Or are you just smacking him around? What do you want? 
We're a bit mystified as to why he was not bailed at the police station, the lawyer said. Mitchell's uh, alleged victim described himself as an associate of the Mongols president and did not provide a statement to the police out of fear. Before his arrest, Mitchell called police to ask why they were investigating him. Constable Kane also said she wanted him kept behind bars because she feared he posed a danger to others and risked interfering with witnesses. So they wanted to keep him on no bail over knocking somebody out? And that didn't even happen. That's messed up over there. Mitchell was granted bail on the condition he not leave Victoria and not attend Gilson's Cafe or associate with the Mongols bikies. Now, let's go over to hear a news story here. Uh, this is one of the reasons why the media, you know, goes after bikers. It's because they think everybody that's a biker rides for Biker for Trump. Rev their engines in Winnebago County City, while Joe Biden's supporters decided to keep standing in a socially distant way. Fox 11's Gabriella Priest brings us more from both sides. Gotta support our man, that's the deal. Bikers across North Wisconsin are gathering in the in the bikers always ask me, why are the bikers here? <laughs> There's Chris the getting this shit again. South Carolina's Chris Fox founded Bikers for Trump. The president announced his run for president in 2015. He says the rally has a mission. Platform that most bikers have on their cell phones that we can register right there on the spot. Bikers for Trump is expecting only riders for the rally. Democrats have Brown County Democratic Party Chair. Okay, I don't care about that one. Uh, anyway, but you can see why the media goes after bikers because they think they're all part of this group, you know, Cox's group. Uh, anyway, here's the other one. Uh, there's two I'm actually going to cover this as far as motorcycle uh, crashes. This one was uh, on a Central Texas Highway. Six motorcycles went down. One biker dies. Uh, state troopers are investigating the fatal crash on Highway 6 near FM 2136 in uh, Clifton involving six motorcycles. A DPS spokesman confirmed that a KWTX Sunday afternoon... At least one biker was killed and three others were transported to an area hospital in critical condition. And I hope they pull through. Hope they do. According to Sergeant uh, Ryan Howard, the accident occurred at around 3.20 p.m. when a group of motorcyclists crashed into each other while attempting to pass a traveling northbound. A Harley-Davidson took a vase of action to avoid the crashed motorcycles and crashed into the side of a Dodge Ram traveling southbound. The driver of the Harley-Davidson was pronounced dead at the scene. Next of kin has not been identified, uh, and the investigation is still ongoing. Uh, so there's a lesson to be learned on this one, especially when you're pack riding, be it suicide or staggered. Don't play follow the leader, man. Uh, if you see a problem going on that could lead to an accident, don't do it. <laughs> now, here's the one I was talking about right here. A devastating crash involving a car and a motorcycle overnight. It happened at the intersection of FM 1960 and Feeder Road for the Tomball Parkway around 1.40 a.m. Police say the woman was riding a motorcycle and was making a left turn when a car ran into her was rushed to the hospital but succumbed to her injuries. Investigators say the driver of the car initially drove off from that crash scene but eventually returned. Police are now looking into whether alcohol played a role in the crash. So it was a hit and run at first, so then they come back. Uh, they're charging her with, or charging the driver with intoxicated manslaughter, but I don't see the hit and run in there. I, I don't see anything in there. <laughs> You know, sad state of affairs right there. Really is, man. Sad state of affairs. So let's go into my final thoughts. 
Chinadel from Hollywood and Chinadel Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. And don't forget, man, to hit that super chat if you're over on YouTube, man. Two bucks, or you can do a recurring two dollars over on PayPal. Everything counts, man, because of uh, the situation that a lot of creators are in over on YouTube. Uh, for those that uh, were wondering what happened with Hollywood and China Down's show last night, we got a little busy and we couldn't record it. So it is back on uh, later on at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time tonight. So make sure you go over there, check it out. All that good stuff. So do you guys see what I mean about how they're treated bikers that go down manslaughter intoxicated okay well what about the hit and run he left the scene just because he came back or who came back the driver of that car doesn't mean you shouldn't do a hit and run you know if they were intoxicated they could have lowered their levels by the time they came back so it's outrageous that happened I'll say it over and over again make sure you join a bikers rights organization you got American Motorcycle Association out there you got Motorcycle Rights Foundation ABATE everybody should be a part of ABATE if you're in the scene make sure you join something man and if you can't get involved put the time in then at least pay some dues for the year. That way that money can go towards fighting for your rights. And they're not just doing protocol stuff. Look twice, save a life. That is uh, a bait. And that's for situations like this. Because there's a lot of cagers out there that are on their phones, they're eating, all that kind of crap. They're not paying attention to the road. And next thing you know, a biker dies. And that's one beef that I got about, uh, with all these states that do the decibel readings on exhaust. Loud pipes do save lives, man. Because if you're like me when you're passing, I'll crank that sucker. Let them know I'm there. But you got to drive defensively as well. That one incident with the six motorcyclists going down. Sad state of affairs right there. Uh, you got to ride you. If you're in a pack, you don't feel comfortable, bow out of that pack is what I say. Don't put your life at risk just because you're afraid of what other people might say about you. Club that's different, they got their own deal. Even then, I'll argue, hey, if you don't feel safe in that predicament, get out of there because not only could you hurt yourself, but you'd hurt the whole pack, especially if you're towards the front, man. You'd take everybody down at that point. Riding a motorcycle is like a loaded gun, man. It, it, it can go off. And some bad stuff can happen to you if you're in a wreck. I've known a lot of people that died. I went to a lot of funerals. Uh, you know, either another driver was at fault or they were at fault themselves for drinking and getting stupid. Stay sober when you're on that bike. Don't put your life at risk because it ain't like a cage where you got some protection, depending on how bad the wreck is. Motorcycle wrecks, man, they turn into something real bad and real quick. So take care out there. You know, end of riding season up north anyway is coming to an end. But down south, man, you're still riding all year round. You got to be careful, especially with all them vacationer and snowbirds coming down there. You got to watch yourselves and learn defensive riding, man. That's the biggest thing that's going to ever help you is defensive riding. And a couple ball bearings, if you ask me. Uh, there's other stuff that'll fall out of a pocket. If you're being tailgated or the driver's uh, driving erratically around you. Make sure you always have that out. You got to make sure you have an out when you're riding a bike. Think miles ahead. 
not freaking feet. So, you know, what <laughs> it just upsets me, you know, when you think about it, uh, how they cover it. I hate that stuff. You know what? I hate, I actually hate the way the news is today, and I'm real freaking sorry for the next generation coming up. They don't know what, you know, the real reporting used to be like, man. Uh, they really don't, and it's a sad state of affairs. Uh, then, you, of course, you go overseas, and, you know, I actually read a story where they said, you know, bikies are in the news more than any other organization is for all this violence happening. That doesn't help either. I actually... Because I did a video on Mel Chansey. Now he's a hell's henchman turned hell's angel during all the Chicago stuff. And he came out and admitted, uh, you know, we made, did this to make money, that to make money. I don't care who you are, how long you've been gone. Whatever you're saying is being listened to. You just have to look at the one Mongols case, man. They were getting freaking Rico for something that Doc Cavaeus did before, what was it, 2007 or something? Years later, they're just trying to build predicates on you. Do you think I'm dumb enough not to know any of that stuff happens? Of course, I'm not. But I'm not going to say, well, this is what... You know, this happened or that happened. No, man. Hell no. You don't admit to that stuff ever. Ever. Take a page from the old fellas, man. Take that stuff to your grave. Just because you're out or out on bad don't mean you start opening up to what happened in your club. Screw that, man. And when I'm talking that, I'm talking about if you're into some illegal dippings, man, shut up. You don't talk to the media about that. Are you crazy? Because I actually had some people say, well, why are you all upset about that? I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. If you have an ex-member talking about we were making piles of cash, I was driving around in a Corvette, we were throwing guns, and we were throwing... You know, drugs, and the big thing about the guns part is, and obviously this schluck didn't know, or just don't care, if any of them guns he sold are still on the street, which there's a high probability in Chicago, that have bodies attached to them, it could all be traced back. There's your predicate. I don't care if it was 20 years ago. If there's bodies on that gun and there's a chain with that gun, which there usually is, now his old club can freaking get hit with it because he was a known angel. So again, I don't care what side of the argument you're on or what side of the fence you're playing on. That is stupid. Very stupid. And that that Rico stuff ain't no joke, man. It ain't no joke. It was lucky the club out in Las Vegas beat it. But nine times out of the ten, you're not beating the Rico, man, once they got you. You're either pleading or any of that stuff. So, I guess that answers the question as far as, you know, why I got all upset about it. It's because that was just a dumb move, man. And then some of the other stuff that he said in there is like, yeah, you know what? Your your story don't add up, especially for people that are around that time. No damn better. You know, don't go out. Oh, I'm trying to help people. <sighs> help them from what? Really, help them from what? You're in the bodybuilding community and you admit using steroids? Really? How's that helping? I don't know. You know, maybe I got a chip on my shoulder as far as that interview went because I know a lot of the stuff he was saying was BS. But at the same time, you know, that one particular section of the interview just peeved me. Because if you're not from Chicago, you don't, you don't know about all the gun violence happening. 
And most of the time, you have weapons that have been on the streets for decades. And during those decades, bodies piled up on that thing. And if it happens like a lot of people uh, know out here, you'll know who, where that gun came from. So that was just stupid. So, what do you guys think of the show? Uh, thanks for uh, becoming a donor over on uh, PayPal. If you had $2 a month, man, that goes uh, real far for helping the show, man. We really appreciate all donations. Don't forget to tune in to Hollywood and China Dow Show. It's Monday through Friday at 7 p.m., but, you know, last episode uh, we couldn't hit because we had some stuff going on, but we're back and ready to go. I think it's going to be episode 30 that's coming out. Man, is it rocking. You know what? That's why I love radio. A lot of creators, they like doing their videos. They like their editing stuff. Me, I just love the radio. I guess I'm just old school like that i love these podcasting platforms you reach a huge audience on them if you do it the right way and it's just good stuff man so with that i'll talk to you guys later don't forget to uh hit that show man we get some nasty stuff going over on hollywood and china now show